maybe severe iron deficiency. A lot of people restrict their salt intake. If you do, you could be eliminating one of your key sources of iodine. You may have switched from iodized salt to something like Celtic sea salt or pink Himalayan salt, but they're not good sources of iodine. You could have increased your intake of foods that have compounds that inhibit the uptake of iodine into your thyroid gland. The most common example of this is large amounts of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and kale and cauliflower. If your cholesterol is running high, or if you feel fatigued, or you feel brain fog, or your hair is falling out, or you're getting puffy under the eyes, or full hands and feet, you're getting symptoms of hypothyroidism. And so if those are happening, you need more iodine in your diet. If you like pink salt, pink salt or sea salt, then use that. But make sure you get an iodine source in your diet. He also mentioned that uh, all those cruciferous vegetables blocking iodine intake. Be careful how much and how they're prepared. And then he also mentioned uh, cholesterol. Low thyroid function can dramatically increase cholesterol. So if you're thinking about taking fish oils, but you haven't remedied the thyroid problem, uh, you should do that first because it will really have a huge impact on cholesterol. Also on blood pressure. When they study hypothyroid women versus normal thyroid women, there can be a 20-point difference in blood pressure. Salt does not have that effect. Even in hypertensive individuals, sodium-sensitive people, which is a small portion of the population, when they eat too much salt, their systolic blood pressure might go up by 2 to 5 milliliters. Not 20 like apnea, and not 20 like hypothyroidism, but 2 to 5 milliliters. And when you get adequate potassium, that elevation goes away. Next up is potassium. Potassium helps decrease blood pressure, as just mentioned, decreases stroke risk, regulates heartbeat, decreases blood sugars, decreases sugar cravings. This is a huge deal in terms of hunger and compliance with the diet. And it'll help resolve constipation. Uh, with 4,700 milligrams of potassium, usually within 24 to 48 hours, and some extra water, uh, then constipation will be resolved. We do not throw fiber at that problem. It will actually make it worse. Getting 4,700 milligrams of potassium is hard to do. You have to be deliberate about it. So the foundation of vertical diet includes high potassium foods like a potato. It's two to three times as much potassium as a banana. Spinach, easy to digest, high in potassium. Uh, orange juice or oranges. Some of you see me, I'll bring the spinach home and freeze it, and I'll put it into you know, four ounces of orange juice uh, and blend it up. It's just a potassium shape that actually tastes good. A cup of yogurt has it's high in potassium. And then meats, uh, 80 to 100 milligrams of potassium in every ounce of meats. So you have to be deliberate. Start by getting out of the potassium first in the foundation of foods. We supplement vitamin D. It's hard to get from food. I have a lot of clients that present with uh, low vitamin D in their blood tests. It improves sleep, it improves calcium absorption by up to 20 fold. We talked about the importance of that for muscle contraction. Also improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, it's good for upper respiratory tract infections, which is now a big concern with COVID. Not saying it will cure it, but it does help put you in a position to be stronger in terms of your immune system. We take it daily, that's better than large doses weekly. Uh, we take it with food because it's fat soluble, or usually with breakfast. We've got lots of feedback from clients when they take it with dinner, that it keeps them up at night. I don't know that that's been studied, but that's, I get a lot of feedback on that. It is the sun vitamin. Next up is magnesium. We supplement that as well. Hard to get from food. 400 milligrams for dinner because it helps with sleep. Also a good vasodilator for blood pressure. This is the immune system. We've covered almost all of this. Vitamin D supplementation helps. Magnesium supplementation. Getting an adequate iodine source. Uh, remedying any liver issues. Getting adequate sodium. And then your hydrochloric acid for your stomach. Salt, by the way, is sodium chloride. Hydrochloric acid. Just increasing sodium or salt intake can help with digestive issues in a lot of people. Glutathione is last on the list. This is the mother of all antioxidants. It's over a thousand times more powerful than vegetables that you can eat or supplements that you can take. Not a great idea to megadose supplements for antioxidants. So Linus Pauling taught us that on vitamin A's and E's. Started creating toxicities that actually became bad for your health. Glutathione is actually manufactured in the body. You can't supplement it. It's a tripeptide. Your stomach will break it down into the individual proteins. And so here's the foods that make up these proteins. Whole eggs, red meat, gelatin from bone broth is high in glycine. All of these things help make glutathione in the body. So I don't just recommend this diet for performance. I recommend it for health. My athletes have to stay healthy. They cannot get sick. It's very important for the immune system. This para-workout drink really only applies to people training twice a day. That's your crossfitters, your MMA fighters, and your football players who do the doubles. You're going to sweat out a lot of water, of course, sodium with that. You're going to burn a lot of glycogen in that training session. Immediately after the first session today, you're going to want to replace all that as quickly as possible so that second workout can be uh, efficient. Here's what you do. You combine these ingredients and you can increase your rate of absorption by up to fourfold. You can buy any two sugars. Dr. Godek has a product called Levelin. Uh, she, she has uh, dextrose and maltodextrose. 
We use glucose and fructose in the EGFR.